You start out crying, then you beg them, and then you just shut up because nothing's working and everything you do seems to make everything worse. So you just lay there and let them do whatever they are doing to you, happen to you, and try not to make a sound. It just makes it worse. Meet Lauren Cavanaugh, born April 1993. She was immediately given up at birth by her mother and adopted by Sabrina and Bill Cavanaugh. We brought her home and we just played with her and, you know, all that good stuff. We were like happy. Lauren stayed for eight months with her adoptive parents. Her life was good, but suddenly her birth mother, Barbara Atkinson, wanted Lauren back. The lawyer who arranged Lauren's adoption had failed to file the paperwork needed to terminate Atkinson's parental rights, so a judge returned Lauren to her mother. Lauren's life was about to take a terrible turn. Before the adoption was overturned, when she was still with Sabrina and Bill, they would let Barbie have visitation. It was court-ordered visitation. She would come back with bruises, severe, horrible diaper rash, signs of neglect, and maybe even abuse. We had pictures. We showed it to the, to the judge. Whether it raised it to the level of saying this is a, enough of a pattern of behavior that you're going to be able to say this is going to continue and it's going to cause problems, it just wasn't there. We drove to the Walmart parking lot in Jasper and we handed her to Barbie. We had to do it. We didn't have a choice. Christmas Day, 1994. Lauren's final day with her adoptive parents. For the next six years, Lauren's biological mother and stepfather would keep her in a closet, torturing her, starving her, and sexually abusing her. My husband called me at work, and he asked me what Kenneth's last name was and what Barbie's last name was. And he said, you remember what you and Mary was talking about the news about the couple that abused the kids? And I'm like, yeah. He said, it's Barbie and Kenneth. And I said, no, it's not. It can't be, no. And my sister grew up. And when she drove up, I knew it was, I knew it was Lauren. Kenneth Atkinson knew the police were coming that night in June 2001. He took Lauren out of the closet. He dressed her up nicely. He sat her at a table and served her some food. But Officer Gary McLean could see that she was filthy, starving, and abused. He took this picture. Then he and other rescuers took Lauren to the hospital and Lauren's parents to jail. It was considered one of the third worst abuse cases where the child didn't die. She was 25 pounds when she was found. She was eight years old. Not just sexual injuries, she had she has cuts and scars all over her body. Every organ, every cell of that child's body was damaged by her treatment in some way or another. Her body was so deteriorated and she was in such dire condition that they were worried that if they did anything wrong in those initial weeks that they would kill her. It was horrifying. I mean, it wasn't a closet the way I, I saw it. It was a jail cell. When I first stepped into the closet, urine literally oozed up out of the carpet around my shoes. Inside, there was feces on the wall, urine-soaked pillowcases, towels, bread bags that she'd used to defecate in, butter bowls. I guess I used that to feed her in and give her water, like a, like a dog. Could you open the door? Why not? Do you know why? They put a chair behind it. Oh, okay. Who did? Who put a chair behind it? Barbie. It was like those six years had disappeared and here was their baby again. She was literally the same size. The doctor said, I, I want to introduce you to somebody. You know, she said, this is Mr. and Mrs. Cavanaugh. And she looked at the doctor and she said, is this my new parents? It was so clear that that little girl, when she went home, was going with them. 
There was no other place in my mind for her to be. For five years, Lauren's adoptive mom rarely let Lauren out of her sight. No sleepovers, no slumber parties, no spending the afternoon in a friend's house. But in August 2005, Lauren's mom finally let her go to a sleepover. It was at a relative's home. The next morning, Lauren was raped in the family's barn. He knew what her parents had did to her. He knew everything that she had gone through. And he just didn't care. Didn't bother him at all. I'm thinking in my head, I know what he's going to do. I don't want him to hurt me even more than what he was already planning to do. And I also didn't want him to, I mean, threaten you know, my mom or me. So I just, you know, you do what you have to. Well, I did what I had to. It, it, this doesn't just go away. You know, it's, 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 this is a lifetime sentence for her. She's very challenged and she's very wounded and she has to work very, very hard to survive still. But even that exceeds expectation. We talked about high school. You said that it felt like you were invisible. So is it the same or is it different? Mm, different. So do you think that in college you may not be as standoffish? You may be more open to somebody talking to you. That is a form of happiness. Happy Lauren makes other people respond to you differently, I'm sure. Whether she's a teacher or um, a therapist or a greeter at Walmart, she's going to make a remarkable friend to somebody. Uh, she's a remarkable daughter to her mom. And I think she's really a remarkable um, person in that she's taught everybody around her all the way up to this point what's possible. Lauren has been broken in every way that a human can be broken and has survived and thrived. Today, Lauren wants to envision a future for herself that includes settling down with someone someday. But she says she's not sure what love means or whether she can feel that way about anyone. I don't think I actually love anything. I care about stuff, but I don't love stuff. I, I'd take a bullet for my mom if somebody came up to her and shot her. She may call that love, but I call that caring because I don't think I'm, I'm not gonna say not able to love, I'm just saying I, I don't think I'm comfortable with it. I try to never give up on anything. No matter what the situation or math problem or whatever. It just makes me want to prove myself even more than what I've already proven myself. And she is proud of you. 